I want to preach today from the subject, loving wisdom from a distraught mother. Loving wisdom from a distraught mother. Oh, I could have named this message, what? 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 What, my son? What son of my vows? What son of my womb? Bless us now, Lord, as we preach the word in Jesus' name. Amen. Allow me to begin by saying, again, I want to say Happy Mother's Day. And when you see this message, on delayed basis. I don't know how quickly we will get it out, but this is our Mother's Day message, and to all of the mothers out there, God bless you. You're doing a tremendous job, and you are invaluable. Amen. Ephesians 4 and 15, the A clause says, speaking the truth in love. Speaking the truth in love, Ephesians 4 and um, 15. Speaking the truth in love. May grow up unto him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Speaking the truth in love, and grow up in Jesus. Speaking the truth in love, literally means speaking the truth in a loving manner or truthing in love. The emphasis of this passage, my friends, is not merely tone and demeanor even though tone and demeanor is very important. Colossians 4 and 6 says, Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. It is so important that you know how to talk to people. Amen how to approach them. Mother Turner did a masterful job this morning in our mother's breakfast. And she was all in my message, uh, encouraging the mothers to dispense motherly wisdom. I said to the mothers, you may be retired from your secular job, but in the kingdom, you're not retired. To be a church mother is more than an honorary position. Church mothers are expected to be women who can dispense sagacious, godly wisdom. And I told the mothers, do not be intimidated. Because you may not be as familiar with the iPhone, laptop, and cell phone, and all these gadgets that are so pervasive in society today. I had something to go wrong with my phone uh, the other day. It wasn't anything wrong. I just couldn't figure it out. And I called my son. Called him to the office. Son, how do I get this to work? It won't work. He hit one button. <laughs> Thing began to work fine. I would still be trying to figure it out. But that doesn't mean that I don't know something. <laughs> and that I don't have something to contribute. Praise the Lord. You know things. You... Uh, uh, have 
years of wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and experiences. Tell you something you know, if you're 70 or older, 65 or older, whatever, that none of, the sm none of these young people know, none of the smartest of us know. We don't know how to live to get 65. Don't know how to make it to 70. Because until you've done it, you haven't. I was somewhere one time in a discussion uh, at a symposium, and I was on this platform, and uh, uh, my credentials weren't then as they are now. And there was another preacher on the platform, and all he could talk about was what he learned in theological classes. And he gave wonderful textbook answers. I spoke. My evangelist Will Bond from years of pastoral experience. And some of the pastoral experiences conflicted with some of the classroom talk. But everybody knows that there is classroom, then there's real life. And then when he went from academia to pastoring, he found out that the man who was speaking from experience knew more than the man who was speaking from the classroom. You got to put it into action. Oh, when you've never been out on the street witnessing the people, you think the world is full of hurting people. They're just all hurting. We're going to go out and reach the hurting. They're hurting. They're lost and they're hurting. And we're going to go and soothe the hurting. And we're going to win the hurting to Christ because they're just, they're just hurting, waiting for someone to come and tell them about Jesus. The experienced evangelist know that you don't know what you're talking about. So then you go out with the experienced evangelist. And you don't run into hurting people. You run into people who want to hurt you. Run into people who will cuss you out. Get out of my face with that Jesus of God. Matter of fact, get out of my yard. And so now you, you, you messed up because you thought they were waiting for you to come and dis, uh, rescue them from their hurting. said to the mothers, which is my point, you have something to say. But you still have to know how to say it. See, because everybody wants respect. And whether you're grown at 80 or grown at 18, grown is grown. So if you treat, you, 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 it takes skill to know how to dispense of the wisdom and the sagacious knowledge that you have accumulated over the years. Otherwise, it will, it will not serve any purpose. Amen. So it is true that we are to have our speech seasoned with grace. Always be with grace, seasoned with salt. But that is not all that is being referenced when the scripture says, speak the truth in love. Speaking the truth in love in its truest sense as you study the text literally speaks to being faithful to speaking the truth. Speak the truth in love is being faithful to speaking the truth. Truth here comes from a Greek word that means presenting an action as truth and not as counterfeit. It is to make one's business to express the reality of love and not to fake love. It deals with being faithful to the truth. The context of verse 
15 of Ephesians 4 is found in verse 14 of Ephesians 4. Follow me now. Verse 14 says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. It says, don't let anybody trick you. No longer let anybody make a fool out of you. Like our folk are being made a fool of with the woke movement. Like our folk are being made a fool of with this kinetic movement. And seem like we're, uh, whatever uh, the latest uh, fad is, whatever the latest flavor of the month is, we're vulnerable to it. When instead of falling for that stuff, we ought to be quick to be faithful to God's truth. And present God's truth, good God Almighty, as reality, not as something fake. And to rebuke the fake teacher, but you always speak the truth in love. The point of this is that there is no one tone or one temperament to expressing the truth. There isn't. The situation dictates the tone. The situation dictates, praise the Lord, the volume that you use. Little John Jr., he's about 15 months old or so, maybe 16, he's, he's walking now, traveling now, running. And uh, when he comes over to the house, we were talking one day and looked, and he was climbing up the stairs. He'd seen people go upstairs before, so he was going up the stairs. And to get his attention to stop him, uh, to just freeze him so it wouldn't go up any farther, you had to use a certain tone to get his attention. You can't just whisper and say, don't go up there, John. Because oh, he's, he's a rambunctious little thing, and hey, amen, walk up to me now. And will reach up for me to shake his hand. <laughs> and when he's happy, he walks around the house like this. <laughs> I said, look at this boy. Look at this little boy. But to get his attention, sometimes you have to speak a certain way in order to uh, be effective. Aristotle said this about meekness. He said, meekness is the quality of being angry when you should be and never being angry when you shouldn't be and the wisdom to know the difference. It's amazing the things that make us upset versus the things that doesn't. And we don't know sometimes the things that we fall for are things that we shouldn't have fallen for. And the things that we, we, many times we stand for things that we shouldn't stand for. It takes wisdom to know when to be angry. And, 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 and the context there is to be angry and display that anger. The Bible didn't say be angry and display it not. The Bible says be angry and sin not. The display of anger is not necessarily sinful. It's called righteous indignation. Praise the Lord. There, there are times when you ought to become indignant. Certain things ought to cause uh, your seasoning with salt to make your speech a little more salty this time because of what transpired. I don't have a sweet, loving, calm speech for a rapist. I don't have a soft tone for a pedophile. Praise the Lord. There's no, there's no 
uh, Jesus loves you as you are in soft tones for a predator. There has to be a form of delivery that relays the point that says this is not all right. In my life, some of the best speeches and talks that I had hurt my feelings, but they got me the way I should be. It changed me. So I walked away with my feelings hurt. Sometimes your feelings need to be hurt. Say amen. In our text on this Mother's Day, we see the words of a deeply upset, agitated, alarmed, perturbed, that is, distraught mother. Praise the Lord. She wasn't in a good mood in our text. Isn't this some Mother's Day? This is a good Mother's Day message because everybody knows that there's two sides. You know why we talk about people just, we just love you today, mother. Mother, you're so sweet. Oh, mother, mother, mother. Part of what made mother so sweet is her ability to get your attention when needed. So well now, I, I hear you, I hear you, I hear you. Let me, let me, well, I will in just a minute because I hear you. Where was the father? Well, it's Mother's Day. But I'll answer that question in just a minute. Say amen. Uh, well, let me answer the question, where, 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 where was daddy? I'll answer it in just a minute. Her son, the son of her womb, the son of her vows, that is the son that she made Promises to God of things that she would do if the Lord would let him have it. Son that she brought into this world had engaged in behavior that required that she get his attention. That required that she call him on the carpet. That she get him straight. That she communicates to him in a manner or in a way where he will get the message. And to me, that's the definition of speaking the truth in love. You get through. If Johnny don't do that anymore, gets through, then that's fine. If that works. If that don't work, then uh, look, Johnny. <laughs> I dare you to do it again. Because you don't want the police to hit Don, Johnny. You don't want the jail cell to close on Johnny. You don't want Johnny to get a record that would affect him for the rest of his days. You see, you, 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 you kids, I hope, I hope y'all got your mama a nice card. I hope you did something because, you see, let me tell you, when I know the parents have been good, the, the, the good ones are the ones that you got a little angst with. Yeah, I tell you, mama, she just, oh, she just get on your nerves. Now, daddy's all right. Oh, dad's all right. Dad get on your nerves. The ones that rubbed you the wrong way in your formative years were helping you because they told you what you didn't want to hear. You know I'm right. Some of y'all sitting there with rocks in your jaws. I might go and slap them rocks out. <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just kidding. Amen. Yes. She had to get in touch with him despite the tone. 
See, because in this day where people are so sensible and, uh, oh, man, least little thing and your, your feelings are hurt and you, oh, my. But I, I would invite you in your leisure. Read Matthew's gospel. Chapter 23. Read the grammatical points of when Jesus, verse 13, verse 15, and down into verses when Jesus said, Woe be unto you, scribes, Pharisees, comma, hypocrites. He didn't say scribes, Pharisees, and hypocrites. He said scribes, Pharisees, comma, hypocrites. He called them hypocrites. And he said it with an exclamation point. Jesus. The one that you see on the cross, they, you know, that, that little sissy looking man they draw up there. That wasn't our Lord. That wasn't our Lord. Our Lord, our Lord. Our Lord was not politically correct. Our Lord was just correct. He told the truth. He wasn't overly harsh. He wasn't draconian for draconian sake. But when he needed to get the message across, when he needed to get through to the person, he knew how to do it. And oftentimes who dictate the, the tools you use is the individual you're talking to. Can I get a witness? So she says to him, what? 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 She's a far cry from what we see in many parenting, in much parenting today. Today's parents try too hard to be like by their children much too soon. Now parents, you do want your children to like you. But you ought not to be concerned, your, your chief concern ought not to be that the three month old like you. Or the three year old like you. Or the four year old, or the five year old, or the six year old, you know. Little, I, we just, we, I, I saw the other day where, you ain't, you're not gonna believe this, where they are pushing, uh, this is somebody from the left, they are pushing that parents get permission from their three-month-old and one-year-old child before they change the diet. That, that you train your little one-month-old land there in a soil diet. May, can mommy change it? And you pause right there so the child will learn that before you change the diaper, you've asked permission because you don't want to be down there in their private parts without the child's permission. That's a word for that. That's a word for that. It's crazy. That's a word for that. That's, that's oh my. To say that's going too far is an understatement of, of the year. That's, 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 that's so far that it's, it's, it's just gone. King Lemuel, in our text, is being spoken to by his mother. Nothing is known of King Lemuel, but Jewish legend, and God bless the Jewish nation, Tomorrow, tomorrow, our president is about to perform what I call a Davidic act. Getting ready to act just like King David. David made Jerusalem the capital of Israel. King Cyrus, see the Iranians are the descendants of the Persians. Darius, Cyrus, these were Persians who on record in the Bible recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Said all who want to go back down to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple at Jerusalem. Even back then, it was recognized as the capital of Jerusalem, of Israel. Presidents Clinton, Bush, and Obama promised that they would move the embassy 
to Jerusalem to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. When David was bringing back the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, he said, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting door, and the King of glory shall come in. He was bringing the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem. Tomorrow, America moves her embassy to Jerusalem. That's a big deal for anybody who understands the Bible. Isn't that something? King Lemuel, according to Jewish legend, is identified as King Solomon. And the mother who is giving the advice to King Lemuel slash King Solomon is his mother Bathsheba. Praise the Lord. God knows how. God knows how to redeem a person. Raise them up and make them somebody. You have to be careful how you write people off. Because, see, if these words are true, then the person who talks about the virtuous woman from verse 10 on down, Bathsheba, teaches what kind of woman every one of us, you women, want to be. So if uh, Lemuel was Solomon, then let me answer the question of where was his father? Well, let me see. his father, of course, was David. And his daddy, he wasn't missing in action. He wasn't an absentee dad. By this time, his daddy was dead. See, his daddy had already given him advice. His daddy told him in 1 Kings chapter 2, says, now in the days of David, now in the days of David drew nigh that he should die. And he charged Solomon, his son, saying, I go the way of the earth. Son, I'm getting ready to die. And he says to young Solomon, probably 20 years old, if that, be strong. Say, I'm getting ready to die. Be thou strong. In other words, I can't go with you now. I can't cover you now. Be thou strong and show thyself a man. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies as it is written in the law of Moses. That thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest and whithersoever thou goest, thou turnest thyself. That the Lord may continue his word, which he spake concerning me, saying, If thy children take heed to their way and walk before me in truth, you see that? With all their heart and with all their soul, there shall not fail thee, he said, a man on the throne of Israel. So by now, my friends, his daddy was dead. But his mother, she spoke up because by the time she spoke this, it is believed that Solomon had began to indulge in witchcraft. That Solomon had began to get into magic and serve gods that he ought not. You see, Solomon married Pharaoh's daughter. According to 1 Kings uh, chapter uh, 3. And it was, a, it was an arranged wedding. It was, it was, it was, a, uh, it was a political move. Um, and it showed actually the strength of Solomon 
because it showed that uh, Israel was a stronger nation by this time than Egypt was because the kings would not have offered their daughter to a lesser kingdom, a, a, a weaker nation. So God had given Israel uh, under David's reign uh, war and under Solomon's reign peace, but he gave them peace through strength. And so we see here where it says, and Solomon made affinity and alliance with Pharaoh, king of Israel, and took Pharaoh's daughter and brought her into the city of David until he made an end of building his own house. Brought her to Jerusalem. And kept her there until he built his palace and the house of the Lord. And the walls of Jerusalem had walls round about. See? Only the people sacrificed high places. In high places. Because there was no house built unto the name of the Lord until those days. And even when they went up on those high places... They actually disobeyed God because the Lord told them not to have service on the high, in the high places, in open air. See, we can't bring that which looks like the world into the house of God and into the worship of the Lord and expect the Lord to be pleased with it. See, you can't, you can't worship the God of the Bible any kind of way. He tells us how to worship him. This is why the, the legends should have thought twice or three times before they hooked up with a Snoop Dogg. Uh, 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 Cobb should have thought and sought the Lord. The Bible has something to say about it before she uh, hooked up with Nikki. And uh, uh, the other one. Um, it, no, yeah, the bishop, the bishop. Uh, before he got with uh, uh, Snoop Dogg and uh, who was that singing with Jay-Z? Uh, Sister Burrell. There's a way to worship God. Amen. There's, there's, there, 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 there are things that he would accept and there are things that he would not uh, accept. And uh, I'll, I'll show you uh, these things. Uh, see, because what happened was they brought in syncretism. Syncretism. I'm getting off, but but uh, let me just go off for a minute. Can I go off for a minute? De Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 12, because uh, I want I want the members of our church to be armed, so that when you're out there and people are talking, you know people now they come after you now. You still go there. You ought to thank God that you're not an unstable soul. You join every church in Raleigh. Stability used to be something that you were praised for. When I, they stop asking me, Coach. They used to ask me when I would come home, are you still with Jesus? Are you still preaching? They stop. Of course I am. Of course I am. And, and I'm going to do it until the day I die and I celebrate my stability in Christ Jesus. I got saved and I joined the Temple Church of God in Christ. And I stayed there until I started the Lighthouse Church of God in Christ. And preached there until they appointed me to the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. And for a while I pastored the Upper Room and the Lighthouse Church of God in Christ. And now I only pastor the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. There's three churches. And now I'm the prelate of MC Third uh, Church of God in Christ. I am not an unstable soul. And I celebrate my stability in Christ Jesus. It's not a weakness, it's a strength. Everywhere, all over uh, the world. Joined every church in Raleigh. That, that doesn't speak well, well of you. It means you're double-minded. Well, can't the Lord lead people? There's no scriptural precedence for that. Right. 
Deuteronomy, just, just for a moment here, I'm going to get back to this mother. Today is Mother's Day. Mother's Day. It's Mother's Day. I'm not supposed to be talking about this stuff. Right now. But Deuteronomy 12, 1 through 4 says, uh, These are the statutes and the judgments which you shall observe to do in the land which the Lord thy God, the God of thy fathers, giveth thee to possess it in all the days that ye live upon the earth. Uh, all the days that you live upon the earth. Thank God for Israel. They're still there in that same land with their same original language, with their same original religion. Ye shall utterly destroy all the places wherein the nations which you shall uh, possess uh, serve their gods. Upon the high mountains and upon the hills and under every green tree. And you shall overthrow their altars and break their pillars and burn their groves with fire. And you shall hew down the graven uh, uh, images of their gods to destroy the names of them uh, out of that place. You shall not do so unto the Lord your God. That is, don't worship uh, in that way. You don't go to those places. After you break down those altars, you don't set up shop there to worship like that. Right there in the Bible. Also, let's look at uh, uh, chapter 16 and verse 21. Let's see what the Bible says about it. God's got something to say about everything. Verse 21 says, Thou shalt not plant thee a grove of any tree near unto the altar of the Lord thy God, which thou shalt make thee. Neither shalt thou set up, set thee up any image uh, which the Lord thy God hated. We are not supposed to, they were not supposed to imitate the worship style of the heathen. See, wasn't supposed to bring that in. Solomon married an Egyptian woman and began to behave in, in, uh, in a manner that he should not. And if you look at chapter 11, and, and I'm getting ready to get out, get out of your way because you're ready to go home and have your Mother's Day dinner. The Bible says, but King Solomon loved many strange women. Together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites. Come on, Solomon. <laughs> you know, his mother was almost late speaking to him. <laughs> of the nations concerning which the Lord said, Unto the children of Israel, you shall not go into them, neither shall they come into you. For surely, that is, marry them and have sexual relationships with them. For surely they will turn your heart away, uh, turn your heart after their gods. Solomon cleaved to these women in love. Verse 5, and, and, it, and Solomon went after Ashtaroth the goddess of the Zidonians, and Malcolm, uh, uh, the abomination of the Amorites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord and went not fully after the Lord as did David his father. And, and uh, then did Solomon build a high place for uh, Chemosh of the abominations of Moab. In the hills that is before Jerusalem. And for Molech, the God that they fed the children to. He's the abortion God. And the abominations, the abominations of the children of Ammon. Mm. And likewise uh, did he for all his strange wives which burn incense and sacrifice unto their gods. In our text, we see his mother going in to speak to her son 
We know that he was grown because he's the king. She speaks to her son, the king, and she starts with the single word, what? What? There is no, oh, hell, the king, most reverent. We're so glad to be in your presence. Oh, no, 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 none of that. What? She says, and, and to get his attention, what, my son? And uh, the word what here in this text is, it's actually an enigma in this verse. Uh, it has been read to mean now then, or listen up. All theologians agree that this what is an attention getting device. It was designed to get his ear. And, I, and so she walked in and, and she used this what to express her dismay, to express her surprise, to express her disappointment with her son. She said, what? My son, which when she said my son, she checked him and let him know that she has a right to address him in this manner because she's his mother. In other words, I, I'm, I come to talk to you now, praise the Lord, uh, like a mother would talk to her son. Praise the Lord. Put all the guards out. Put all these other people. Uh, this, this, yeah, that's right. This is Mother's Day. I got to tell you something, Negro, that you need to know. What? My son. I can see Solomon I looking at her, and, uh, and uh, he had thought what, but she brought him down. What? My son. Are you with me? And then, and then she said, uh, let me tell you, the son of my womb, that is... I brought you into this world. Oh, you the king, but I remember when I changed your diapers. You're large and in charge now, but I had you. When it was goo goo ga ga, when, when if I didn't, if, if it wasn't for these paps that you did suck, you would have never become king. I need to get your attention. Oh, that we had more mothers. You see the boy going off, and there you are trying to make excuses for him. See your child going off. Parents or something can know their child is wrong and then pretend that you don't know. Pretend that you're not aware. Pretend that you don't see. You see everything else. You keep up with everything else, and the rules don't change. Rules don't change because it's your child. Rules of life doesn't change because you, you love your child. You ought to love them, but you ought to love them enough to say, what? Son of my womb, what? Son that I brought into this world, what? Son of my vows, before, praise the Lord, uh, I conceived you. You were not the first child that uh, I was pregnant with. Somebody check your phone. That's bad, ain't it? Let me let them get it. Praise the Lord. I don't know who it is. Now listen. She said, she said are, you, are you praying for me? Yes. See, because, let me tell you what she's showing him. She, tell me what she, 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 she's showing him. See, your brother, your brother, mothers, your brother died. See, the first child, that I had for your daddy. Uh -huh. I, I, I was bathing myself. Uh -huh. It was a time when the kings were supposed to be out to war. Uh -huh. My husband.
husband was out to war. The soldiers were out to war. But the king was out of place. David was out of place. And, and son, it was right after that special time of the month with women. I was bathing myself and the king saw me. In other words, Solomon, let me tell you who you are. The king saw me and sent for me. See, times are very, were very different then. See, uh, we live in a democracy. And she came along in an aristocracy. The king had power. And when the king sent for her, she had to come. Well, I got, I got my rights. Ah, he's the king. And brought that woman before the king. And David took up a relationship, an adulterous one, with Bathsheba. Bathsheba got pregnant and told the king. The king called her husband Uriah off the battlefield and said, go get with your wife because if we're going to fix it, we're going we're gonna, to, we're going to, you know, we're going to fix this and we're going to tell, praise the Lord, you're, uh, David, we're going to tell Uriah that the child is his. But Uriah was so faithful to David and to Israel that he would not lay with his wife while Israel was at war. See, she's trying to tell him who he is. So you, 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 you've gone off, but, but you, you need to know who you are. Parents, you need to tell your children who they are. A young, young lady that we spoke to earlier, tell that baby as that child grow up, give them their history. Let them know you're special. God had to reach over here and reach over there, do this and do that for you to even get in the world. So you really got to make something out of your life. Mm, I feel my help. And uh, praise the Lord. I'm preaching good. And she, but your, uh, Uriah wouldn't do it. So David had Uriah killed. Solomon's still standing there listening. Wondering, what does this have to do with me? And he took me to be his wife. And uh, the baby that I was carrying. When I gave birth, the child got sick. Your daddy fasted and prayed that God would heal the baby. He didn't shave and he didn't bathe, laying before the Lord. But God took the baby. They didn't even want to come and tell your daddy that your eldest brother uh -huh, by me was dead. David looked at them when they came in the chamber and he could tell by their expression, the news is not good. And when he understood that the child, your brother had died, David got up from the fast, called for some food, began to shave and bathe. And one of them asked the king, what are you doing? David said, uh, uh, he can't come to me, but someday I can go to him. Oh, Lord. And uh, it broke my heart. Bathsheba said, when I lost my son, she said, but oh, I prayed. And I said, God, I'm talking about my vows now. If you let me have another one. If you just let me conceive again, I'll raise that boy right. I'll teach him the ways of the law. I'll tell him about his father. I'll tell him about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'll tell him who he is. And son, the Lord touched me and David one night and I conceived again. Next thing I know, then came you. And that ain't all, son. But when your daddy was on his deathbed, some of them dummies who were keeping him, they brought a young lady in the room and laid the young lady on your daddy and tried to see if she couldn't warm him up. 
but I found out that you can't send a child to do a woman's job. She said, I walked in there while your daddy was dying and I said, David, he responded because he loved me, knew my voice. Oh, oh David. David said, what is it, baby? His mind went back because he loved Bathsheba. And she said, didn't you promise me that my son Solomon would become the next king of Israel? David said, yeah, I promise. She said, well, Adonijah has already usurped the throne. David said, death? Wait a minute. Sickness? Wait a minute. He got up out the bed and went and set the record straight. And now he told Solomon, I'm getting ready to leave here. Oh, Lord. I just read it to you. He said, show yourself a man. Thank you, Jesus. Be a leader. Now let me fast forward it to the time of the text. She said, I didn't raise you to serve no Egyptian God. I didn't raise you to do the things that you are doing. What are you doing with yourself? Parents, you need to tell your child, I didn't raise you to smoke marijuana. I didn't raise you to drink beer. I didn't raise you to become a dopehead. Son, I didn't raise you to be a homosexual. Daughter, I didn't raise you to be a husband. Can I get a witness here? I didn't raise you to become a Muslim and you're walking around saying assalamu alaikum. I raised you to serve the God of the Bible. I raised you to be somebody. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Somebody praise the Lord in here. Shake somebody's hand, ask them, how did your mama raise you? Did she raise you to do the things that you're doing? Did she raise you to be a home master? Did she raise you to be a prayer dodger? Did she raise you to question the Bible? Did she raise you to be a man that won't hold a job? Did she raise you to be an excuse maker? Did she raise you to be a hoochie mama? Did she raise you? Oh Lord, good God Almighty. I want to tell somebody that it's time to get right with God. It's time. Yeah. Yeah, Lord. I'm getting ready to close here. Uh, but I want you to do this. And I know I'm, I'm, I'm asking you to speak to your neighbor. Tell, I want you to tell your name, neighbor. I'm not above anyone. But I am above some things. Oh, Lord. I'm not above any person, but I'm better than some actions. I think too much of myself to fill my belly with wine and alcohol. I think too much of myself to fill my brain with drugs and my veins with drugs. I think too much of myself to go to school and learn nothing. I think too much of myself to let the devil make a fool out of me because I've been raised to be somebody. Mothers, when you get home, fathers, when you get home, tell your children 
who they are. And if they act like they're not listening, get their attention. What? 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 Woo! On this Mother's Day, black folk know we know we ought to be ashamed. We wasn't raised to put tattoos all over our bodies. We wasn't raised for our men to have piercings all in their ears and everything. We were not raised to show our rump in public, pants hanging off your rear end. We were not raised to enjoy hip hop, beat bop, and all that crazy stuff. We were raised to be somebody. We overcame slavery. We overcame Jim Crow. We overcame all these things. And look at us now. Say yeah. yeah, Lord, raise your children, raise them to live holy, raise them to live right. That's what she said. You, why, why are you behaving this way? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Put, put that crown down. I ain't studying no scepter. I ain't worried about that. I don't care what your rank is. You acting like a fool. Your daddy would, would, would roll over in his grave. Your daddy, the thing that made David great. David had his shortcomings, but David never served but one God. Never. He never walked in idolatry. What are you doing serving all of these gods? Where did you get that from? Something ought to rise up in you. Something ought to rise up in you. Family pride. You are Thomas. Ben son. Just that alone. Just that alone ought to prevent certain things. James, you are Turner's boy. Now you know good where James Henry Turner's son can't be out there. Doing something. Doing, acting the fool. Mother T, that's you, you know. Just that alone ought to keep you. Just your parents alone. Little Williams, Thomases. Let me start calling the roll. Lester's. What, what, what is this? Woodens. What is this? We act like we hadn't been told. That's your mama right there. That, that, dick, that ought to dictate, sir. She's a class lady. That ought to control you. Well, I, I, want, I, want, to, I, want, I want to lay my own path. That's, these are the misings of a fool. We are like we don't understand heritage. And then sometimes, sometimes you're the one in the family that God uses to charter a new course. Cause for some people, the answer is yes, I was raised to be all these things. Yes, I was raised to smoke dope. Yes, I was raised, but I heard an old story of how the savior came from glory and how he bled and died on Calvary. Ah, to save a wretch like me. Can I get a witness here? Then I cry. Ah, Savior, come heal my wounded spirit. I repented of my sins. And I won. How many won? The victor, the victory. Woo, somebody praise the Lord in here. Give him praise. That good mother said, see, she, she raised him to be somebody. Notice her language, king. 
Not losers now. Kings don't give their strength to women. That's physical strength, sexual strength, and financial strength. Kings don't do that. Kings don't get drunk. I'm, I'm raising you to be a king. So you raise them right. I'm a, see, well, I, I, I know some people around the corner and, 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 and their parents ain't that strict. Well, maybe their parents aren't raising their children to be kings. Maybe, maybe they don't want theirs to reign. Maybe they don't care. But you are being raised. A good stepmother step in and teach you right and check you. You ain't my mama. I'm the best one you ever had. Oh, don't get me started. I'm right. Raise them to be somebody. This is applicable to family, schooling. You, you, your school's not a social club. You, you kids who go to college, you, you, you're not there. Praise the Lord to be wild. It costs too much. You're there, you're there to learn something and get out fast as you can. And then come and repay, come and repay some of that investment that we made in you by being somebody. Says, she told him, she told him, and see, in this day of political correctness, we would think that she was being racist and being classist. She said, listen, let the drunks drink. Yeah, let, let folk who ain't headed nowhere, if they want to drink to drown all their troubles, let them. But we don't do that. So I'm teaching some of you right now how to be a parent. You know, well, you know, some people just choose to be drunks, and that's their choice. We're not going to judge them. That's all right. But over here, we, you know, we don't drink. No, 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 no. Don't, don't tell them that stupid like that. Tell them the truth. Uh, son, they're losers, and losers lose. I'm, I'm, daughter, I'm raising you to be a winner. I'm raising you, son and daughter, with high expectation. We do not do those things. Instead of trying to drink our problems away, we pray our problems away. Instead of trying to drug our problem away, we work through the problems. We ask God to give us power to work it out, to work it out, to work it out. And you never, somebody say never. 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 Forget how to use this. When all else fails, there's a trip that you can give them. It's called knocking them into the middle of next week. Because this will be safer than the police. This would be safer than the stun gun. This would be safer than the billet. Early on, early on, put boundaries in that child. Early on, put it in them. Y'all talking about, we just love Mother Ellison. She walks in and, oh, Mother's so sweet. Ask Tom. He's standing back there. I remember running, trying to get away from her. When we figured out we could outrun her. Mom didn't. See, when mother was a little girl, mom, my, 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 grandma, my mom used to be a, a sharpshooter. She could shoot. Probably still can. So we're running. I'm trying to get away. I, I, she can't catch me. Mama just stopped and grabbed the broom and sent a projectile. And I'm running. And Tom, am I telling the truth? Bam! 
Man! You know what? What, 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 what did what'd you get out of it? I learned not to ever do that no more. No matter what. I learned two things. Don't do what I did to get me in trouble the first place, but the next time I get in trouble, whatever you do, don't run. There's a price to pay. And she used to tell me as a little boy, as a little boy, she would say, son, every time I see a vision of you in the future, I see you doing something wearing suits. She was telling me all the time. We weren't even in church at that time. But God. But God. These are the words of a distraught mother. She said to her son, use your position of authority to speak for those who have no voice. Use your position. Don't use your authority to be a woman chaser. Don't use your position in life to be a whore master. Don't, don't, it's, it's tempting to just have harems and because you're the king, you can get all the women you want. It's tempting to do that, but it may be tempting, but it's not advantageous. It will destroy you. Oh, it's tempting to drink all you want because you're the king, you can. But great leaders, don't do that. See, granddaughters, you, you come up in a, a, good, a good family. You, your grandmother's saved. Your daddy's saved. You know, I didn't say your family is perfect, but people save and trying to make it. You know, that's, that's a thing going around now where, where folk try to find whatever fault they can in their parents try, so they can justify something they did. That what they want to do. Well, you know, mama, I don't understand because when, when I was a child, you were always at church. You were never there for me. 55. At 55, saying stuff like that. You ought to be, you, you ought to be glad she was at church and, 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 not at, and not at one of them houses. So there's a whole lot of places she could have been other than church. And let me say this. It's amazing in the family, but it's dynamics. It's the human condition. Takes Patrick Wooden to say this. But the parent who leaves, who divorces and leaves, who walks away, tends to be the hero. And the parent who stayed there and toughed it out and helped you get through and knocked you upside the head you tend to downplay what they did. But you ought to thank God for the person who stood by you. Maybe she didn't get everything right. Maybe she didn't, but she was there. Well, I wanted to go live with my daddy. You know why you didn't? He didn't want you. You were where you were, you were where your only option was. And then sometimes we make heroes out of the person who left. Whatever reason. It wasn't between me and them. But my mama went there for me. All my life. I have, I have fond memories of my father. But my mother was there for me. That little lady right there, right there. Right there. I don't remember my, 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 fa my father never spanked me. He was a good dad. Wasn't there. So you mad with the one who kept whooping you. But the one who was whooping you was the one who was there. Right. Somebody's going to go and apologize for, for Mother's Day today because what? 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 You've been, you've been barking up the wrong tree. 
You've been blaming the wrong one. At least in this case, David was dead. She called him on the carpet. Parents, don't be afraid to call them on the carpet. To tell them the truth. Love them enough to tell the truth. The most loving thing that you can do is to tell someone the truth. Hopefully, it can be told in a delicate manner. Hopefully, it can be told in, in, in a soft way. But if the situation calls for it, your child on drugs, you don't sit there and cry with them and all that stuff and don't want to make it. Don't, 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 don't call him a, don't call him a dope head. Don't, don't call her. Don't call her a drug addict, but she's on drugs, and she's an addict. What you want me to call? Maybe you know when people change, when people see how awful they are, the awfulness of your situation. When you come face to face. That's when you got saved. You came face to face by how dirty you yes, actually were. We yes, came face to face with the fact that we were lost. Yes, lost. Yes, lost. Wasn't as smooth. Wasn't as cool. Not as with it. Not as valuable. Not as good looking. Not as pretty. Not as all of that that we think we are. And we realize that we needed a savior. And after she rebuked him about all the women that he was messing with, laying with, blowing his wealth and everything else with, I heard her say, who can find a virtuous woman? <laughs> For her price is far above rule. Now they go into all that. Say amen. 